All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, Khan Academy. It looks like you three all got the through the Khan Academy. Um, go to uh, Class Kick, please. We're gonna open up that balance and equation worksheet. Morning, Maylee. Okay, um, we, we're gonna go to Class Kick. I'm gonna share my screen, open up that balanced equation worksheet on Class Kick. Okay, most of you did pretty well with this one, but there was one that seemed to cause us some problems. Um, okay, let's first look at number nine. You have eight solvers right away, so the best thing to do there would be to put just an eight there in the in front of the SO2. All right, that gives you 16 oxygen. So what do you have to have here? Eight. Okay. Um, that was one, I think. Maybe maybe only one of you missed that one. Um, the other one, I think three of you missed. Let's see. Which one was it? I think it was number eight. Look at number eight, see if you can balance that, and then we'll uh, work on it together. Or maybe yours is already balanced. Okay, McKenna, what do you think? What do you have? Just go across. Three, two, one, six. Three, two, one, and six. Everybody agree with that one? Okay. Uh, number three. Look at number three, make sure yours is balanced, and then I'll uh, ask someone to share their answer. Okay, Lexi, what do you got? Um, it's just one, 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 two. But here you have two carbons. Oh, so it should be one, one, two, two, right? Yeah, one, one, two, two. Okay, anybody have any other questions on any of those? Hey, if you haven't finished that assignment, I mean, yeah, get it done, please. All right, I'm gonna stop here for a second. Okay, uh, go to explore learning. And open up the balancing chemical equations one first, the first one we did.
Okay, I'm gonna share my uh, screen. We're gonna look at number two together on the assessment. So if you launch the gizmo, scroll down to the questions. That's not it. Okay, number two. What coefficients would balance the following equation? Maya, what do you think? I was wondering why you weren't. I was I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. Which one? Uh, the second one. B. <laughs> okay, B has uh four carbons, four carbons. Twelve hydrogens, twelve hydrogens, oxygens eight, plus six gives you how many? Fourteen. Fourteen. You have 14 over here? No. No. Okay, Maylee, what do you think on number two? C. C. So if you pick C, you're going to have four carbons, four carbons. That's good. Hydrogens, you got 12. Six times two, you have 12 hydrogens. Oxygens, you have 14 over here. Here you'd have eight. Eight plus six is 14. So yes, C is the correct answer. Okay. And not all of you got done with that quiz. So if you haven't finished that one, then make sure that gets done. All right, let's look at the other gizmo now. I'm going to stop share for a second. And we're going to look at the quiz underneath the other gizmo. So just the chemical equations. Launch the gizmo, scroll down to the assessment. And again, we're going to start on number two. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at number two together. Okay, number two, which set of coefficients would balance the equation? Have you looked at that one? <laughs> hmm. 
McKenna, what do you think? B. B. So B would give you three magnesiums, three magnesiums on both sides, two aluminums, two aluminums, and then two times three, six chlorines, three times two, six chlorine, so B. Okay, again, on that one, um, I think there was uh, maybe three of you that didn't take that assessment. Okay, I'm gonna stop share. Okay, um, go now to Google Classroom. There's a worksheet on stoichiometry relationships. I guess it's intro to stoichiometry worksheet. Okay, I'm going to share. Okay, stoichiometry worksheet, uh, just an introduction. It gives you the sample here of what you're gonna to have to do in the other graphs. It's the balanced equation, the word equation, iron three oxygen forms iron three oxide. A particle model, uh, there are four black circles to represent the four atoms of iron. Three groups of two circles representing the three oxygen molecules and then two groups of Fe2O3. So here's a Fe2O3. Each one has two black circles and three clear, representing the two irons and three oxygens, and there's two groups of them. Okay, atom-molecule relationship. If we look at these balanced equations, we pull numbers out of a chemical equation and do math calculations, and that's called stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is the uh, mathematical relationships in a chemical reaction. So in our atom molecule relationship, you have four atoms of iron, three molecules of oxygen, and two formula units of Fe2O3. We use the word atoms here because the smallest particle of an iron would be an atom of iron. We wouldn't call it a molecule. With oxygen gas, since it's diatomic, it's not just, uh, we could call it three diatomic oxygens or just three molecules of oxygen. Now, the tricky one here is the word formula units. Um, iron three oxide is ionic. It's made out of a metal and a non-metal. Um, any ionic compounds we call formula units. If they were um, made out of two non-metals like sulfur dioxide, I, then we could use the term molecules. Okay. But since it's ionic, it's called a formula unit. Okay, mole to mole relationships. So again, you pull the same numbers out of the balance equation, four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen gas, two moles of iron three oxide. Okay, Mass relationships. If we look at iron in the periodic table, and let me just open up a periodic table.
Okay, we look at the atom atomic mass of iron. The atomic mass of iron is 55.845. We usually just use uh, digits to the hundreds. So 55.85. And then we look back at the worksheet, which was there. All right, if we take that number of each iron and multiply it by four, we should get something close to 223.4. We do the same thing with oxygen. Each oxygen molecule or atom is 15.999 or 16.00. Sixteen, double it because there's two oxygens, then triple it, you're going to get 96. And we can do the same thing to this. There's two irons and three oxygens. Add up all those, multiply it by two, and you're going to get your 319.4. You should notice, though, if you calculate, if you just take the sum of those two numbers, it's going to have to equal the last one if it's a balanced equation. And then the last one is just showing that. 319 grams of reactants forms 319 grams of products. Okay, we are going to do the first one together. So try to come up with the balanced equation. You might have to refer back to your list of polyatomic ions because you see the word bicarbonate. Then refer to the rules of naming acids because acidic acid. I'm gonna stop share so you're working on it and not just looking off mine. They're supposed to be working on that. There you go. You're supposed to be working on that.
Okay, anybody have the balanced equation? If you think about what, what's sodium bicarbonate? That's just a fancy term for what? They may know? Isn't it like table salt? Well, it's kind of like table salt. Baking soda. So baking soda with vinegar. What happens when you add baking soda and vinegar? It like foams. It foams, right? So if it foams, it's producing carbon dioxide. So you know carbon dioxide has to be one of those things on the right. All right. Let me share my screen and we'll uh, look at that equation together. So sodium bicarbonate, acidic acid, sodium acetate, positive one with the negative one. And then any time a, a product can form water, it's going to. So it's water and carbon dioxide. Now on this, when you fill out the word equation, right, think about this first box for the sodium bicarbonate, second box for acidic acid, that last box for all the products together. And same thing with the particle model and everything else. Right. Go ahead and fill out the second line, word equation. Okay, second line, <coughs> volunteers. McKenna, you got it? Uh, sodium bicarbonate. Huh? Sodium bicarbonate. Okay, sodium bicarbonate. Uh, acid, acidic acid. Acidic acid. Sodium uh, acetate. Sodium acetate. And water and carbon dioxide. Very good. Why did you bring that one? I just have to wash one. Okay. I'll uh, share my screen here, make sure you guys have that one correct. Uh, maybe I'll share. Okay, that uh, next line, the particle model, um, this would be much easier if it was on paper. You could just draw little circles. Uh, don't worry about the particle model too much. I'm not gonna have you like make circles on this. So we'll skip that line. All right, and that goes uh, for the rest of your assignment. I mean, you can take that particle model and just ignore it. Okay, atom molecule relationship. 
And if we look back at our example, now we're using the coefficients, right? The only real hard part about it is to figure out if it's a, is it an atom, is it a molecule, or is it, or do we use the term formula unit? Okay. So you'll notice right now that, is this balanced? I'll let you check it yourself. I'm gonna stop share. Make sure the equation's balanced before you start putting in words for the atom molecular relationship. Hey, is it balanced or do you have to add coefficients? Balanced. It is balanced. Okay, in your uh, third line there, uh, sodium bicarbonate is what? Is that a formula unit or is that a molecule? Anybody? Sodium formula bicarbonate is, is what? Formula unit. You are correct. It's made out of a metal and a polyatomic ion. So it's a formula unit. What about uh, acidic acid? Are acids ionic? Do you have to look at charges? No. Try again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so acidic acid is also a formula unit. I, on the other side, sodium acetate. Ionic? Yes. Okay, water. No. No, water is a molecule. So you use the term molecules for water. What about carbon dioxide? Formula unit or molecule? Is carbon a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal. Non-metal. So it's made out of two non-metals. Again, you use the term molecule. So sharing. Oh, that line should be blank. Okay, next line, mold the mole relationships. You need to slow down. I sorry.
Can I speed up again? No. I, you want us to put the words or the letters? Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever's easier for you. I mean, if you have it like, and then in the next line, if you have it typed like that, you can always put it, you know, like that in the next one. So here's just using the term mole. So all you have to do here is just go like one mole of, whoops, sorry. And here, one mole of citic acid. And here, I, one mole sodium acetate, one mole water, one mole carbon dioxide. Okay, uh, you have that? I'm going to stop share. Okay, for the next line, mass relationships. I'm going to look at the first one, NaHCl3. Um, Okay, NaHCO3, so Na, no, no subscript by it, so just, we're going to look at the mass of just sodium, so 22.99, one of those, we should be adding all these up, all right, one H, H, again, just to the tenth, or to the hundred, sorry, is 1.01, .01. so, so far we have 22.99 plus 1.01, all right, one carbon, so add 12.01. So we have our Na, we have our H, we have our C, and now we have to add three oxygens, and each oxygen is 16. So three of those. So 16 times three, what was that, 48? So add all those together, right? the 48, the 1.01, .01, the 22.99, and the 12.01, and come up with a total. And that would be the mass relationship for sodium bicarbonate. Lexi, well, you got it?
Sodium is 22.99. Hydrogen is 1.01. All right, carbon is 12.01. And then three oxygens, so you have 48.0. Right. Find the total. 84.1. We agree, everybody? I got 84.01. 84 84.01? Yeah. Maya, what'd you get? 84.01. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna do the same with acidic acid. All right, so we have, look at the full molecule. We have four hydrogens, each one is 1.01. .01, so we have 4.04 .04 right away, our four hydrogens. Atomic mass of carbon again is 12.01. .01. We have two of them. So 24.02. And then we have two oxygens, each is 16, so 32. Okay, grand total. 60.06. Nine. Do the long way on this one. Um, if we look at sodium acetate, right, we have one sodium. Two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens. All right, that's our sodium acetate. We have a water, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. And then we have a carbon dioxide. So one carbon and two oxygens. Total that up. 143.09. Okay. Now hopefully we're gonna get something close if we just added those two numbers together. So 84 plus 60.06. Yeah, it's pretty okay. close. It may not be exact, but it should be close. Okay. Okay, the last thing you have to do is just add up, you know, these two numbers, put that here, 84.01 plus 60.06. .06. This one we already totaled is 143.09. And what is 84.01 plus 60.06? .06? One forty-four point zero seven. Okay. Okay. So we have um, one more chart to do. And you know, by the next time we meet, have the chart done and number three. So I'll put that on the uh, assignment thing instead of all do. Okay, sorry. I guess it's
Okay, also assigned is a pogo. Um, it goes through the same skills. You shouldn't have any trouble with it, um, assuming. But only do like through the first six pogos on your Google Classroom. Questions? How? Okay, next Monday when we meet, it might be the last time. <laughs> make sure if you're, uh, you know, not caught up with your work, make sure you get caught up so that last week, you know, after May, so you don't have to be one of those that have to spend an extra week doing these meetings. Okay. There's some of you falling behind and not catching up until after the due date. So kick that to the curb, okay? All right, guys. Have a good day.